Yo, so welcome back, and today I'm stoked because we are going to be putting to the test the $200 per month uh, ChatGPT model on extended thinking mode against the $20 a month one, which I'm currently paying for, uh, for some research problem that I have in my maths PhD. To see kind of whether it's more capable, this model that's 10 times more expensive, you know, is it 10 times better? Uh, we'll see. So this is basically what what's being given in one, one question. It kind of goes to show how impressive these things are because they're taking in so much information in one go. So we'll start with an explanation to it. I'm gonna ask you to prove a theorem. Here's some, I'm gonna give you some known theorems and some notation that we're going to use across the whole problem and I'd like you to prove the final theorem that I'm stating to you. There's a way that I think I could prove this theorem but I kind of want to see if ChatGPT can do it um, but it's always good if I can allocate some work to ChatGPT and then I can work on something else it kind of helps in the research process. So anyway, so the notation that we're using, bah, it's kind of, it looks confusing maybe if you don't do maths, which is fair enough. So I give it some notation of basically what I'm going to use. I've said prove the final stated theorem, so that's not yet. So I say we begin with a known result in the circular unitary ensemble in, in random matrix theory. Uh, we know this. This is just a pretty well-known uh, equation, actually. So let's just say I've given it some known results. And then I've basically given it a theorem, um, which I'm asking it to prove. This would be very useful if, it would, if, if I could prove it, I think. I mean, maybe it wouldn't be that useful, but it would be good to know whether it's true. So this is basically the theorem that I've given it. So this makes up the whole of the question which I've basically given to ChatGPT. So I'm now gonna show you the answers that we get on GPT-5. And my friend, who's our benefactor today, um, he actually works in the chip design industry and he's asking it on his uh, pro subscription so that we can determine whether, you know, if the 10X in cost uh, corresponds to like a 10X improvement uh, in the capacity of the model. So so, so let's start with the basic, the basic bitch one. Uh, so this is GPT, GPT plus, so this is my one. Said so go I'll prove the final statement. Here's the notation. This is literally what I showed you guys. It's an awesome question. Mm. What I like about this, which I kind of realized after, because this one thought for four minutes. So this is the the twenty pounds a month one. Thought for four minutes, and it does actually correct me because there was a typo, which is actually quite crazy actually if you think about it. So I I believe it's here. Uh, in the prompt, I hadn't put these terms uh, in Z. But I knew that they were there because actually, yeah, in the previous theorem they're there, I just forgot to type them up into the prompt. Or it just goes to show that there's some useful capacity either way. I mean, the fact that it can correct, like, you know, in the blah, blah, blah restatement, you're missing the scalar factors Z. I mean, that's quite impressive, to be fair. When comparing this to GPT-5 Pro, you see it's thought for 42 minutes, which is about 10 times as much as it thought on the PLOS model. And it's giving the same sort of justification that there is this missing prefactor that depends on the Zs. But so far, the answers are pretty much the same and are just restating the theorem that I've already given it. So the way that um, GPT Plus goes about trying to prove it is it tries to split uh, the quantity up here into a product of two things, one in Z and one in W. And then that kind of makes the theorem easier because you've actually made your problem, you've like split it in half, but each problem's the same. So you only have to solve one problem. That's, I think, the motivation of what, what this is. And it's justifying that basically that where you pick up these numbers, uh, which are quite important actually in the, in the form of the formula, is from uh, di differentiating what's called the kernel. So it's like the inside bit of this determinant. Comparing this to GPT-5 Pro's answer, GPT Pro approaches this problem by first proving two smaller results, also known as a lemma, which it will then use to try and prove the main result. This is a slightly different approach, although following the same kind of philosophy as GPT-5 Plus, it does split the problem into two parts, separating the main problem into a sort of problem only involving the Zs, so a smaller problem, and another one involving only the W variables. And because there's a kind of symmetry in the problem itself, you only need to solve one of these problems to kind of get the whole result. I would say that both ChatGPT Plus and GPT Pro spend a lot of time restating things which I've actually given it in the prompt, which is fairly useless actually. So this whole section of GPT Pro's uh, response was all in the actual prompt itself. So to me, that's not actually that useful. It's just regurgitating exactly what I've already asked it. Then comes, I guess, what is quite embarrassing, I would say, for GPT-5 Pro is uh, this line of reasoning here in which there's an equation which is complete mumbo jumbo. This really is uh, AI slop hallucination uh, to the max. So if we zoom in, 
uh, you'll see that this equation is mumbo jumbo because it starts putting random equals uh, 1 to the power of s but s here is a whole number so that would just be 1 and for sure this whole quantity is not equal to 1 and in any case there's so many other uh, notational mistakes in this formula uh, that just mean that it doesn't make sense whatsoever so if you actually read what it says it says then the inner sum in 9 is exactly blah 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 and so and then it states this equation, which we know is complete mumbo jumbo. So it really does take reading into the fine granular details to see that the response of GPT-5 Pro is really not very good actually. It fundamentally doesn't manage to prove the identity that I've asked it to do, and even more than this, it pretends that it can prove it, and only in a like single equation on step four of its whole justification does it start putting in random stuff that doesn't make any sense in order to pretend that it's actually managed to prove it. That said, it did give some useful ideas. That's only useful in the same sense as a search engine, maybe better than the standard search engine, but absolutely not some sort of entity that you can allocate work to do and trust that it would give you a good answer when it eventually comes back with its workings. All right, back to GPT-5+. plus. I, I had a look through this for a few hours, actually, and I was pretty impressed, to be fair. Like, to be honest, the proof wasn't super clear to me. Like, to, I definitely wouldn't trust it on its own, but it was, it was good enough where I felt like I got some understanding. Understanding. I mean, it doesn't go into that much detail, I have to say. So for me, that's not very um, pedagogical, if that makes sense. So it hasn't really explained it to a dum-dum. Okay, how do I compare the two? I personally kind of think I prefer the GPT plus answer. Feels bad to say that. Like if, if you're saying, okay, I'm paying $200 for this, it's definitely not worth 10 times as much. I would like to have seen it go into more detail specifically on the things I'm asking it to show and not to just like restate the problem to me. That's kind of useless. I maybe expected a bit more to be honest. If you're gonna pay 10 times as much, I expected like the model to be even one and a half times better. I don't think it's showing that much improvement actually, which like maybe that's concerning is like the t thinking time corresponds to actual inference compute, but if it's putting a lot more inference compute and the question and the answers are pretty similar, it doesn't really bode well for scalability to be fair. Again, I don't really know, like I don't work in AI, so you don't know how much can be, maybe the, roughly the same inference cost on both sides. I doubt it, but not really that mind blowing, but that's also kind of how it goes with ChatGPT. A lot of the time it's really not that good. And then you should occasionally get a glimpse and you're like, wow, that's really, really useful. Like it, it will answer it right. And you can check and it's, and it's done it properly. It's done the thing properly. You go through and it's like saved you some time. That's for when it's worth it. It's not consistently good. So I will keep sending this to my friend so long as he's willing to um, process the queries. Um, but I can give a better idea like on an actual long-term sustained use of this model, whether it is much better. But so far as I can see with this, kind of splitting hairs, to be honest, and definitely not worth 10 times as much. So yeah, I guess maybe slightly underwhelming overall.